All right, we're going to go ahead and get started with the next one. So um, i, I got to be honest, this is the one I've been most excited about. So one of the advantages of actually being a resident in the neighborhood is the opportunity to walk down the street or around the corner and stop in and see you guys and uh, grab, a, grab a cold one uh, and get to know you guys a little bit. So that's been fantastic. So I'm excited to talk about your stories a little bit. Um, so let's just start off. I have each one of you introduce yourself, um, talk a little bit about your company, um, and you know, kind of what your your focus is from a craft beer perspective. And sure. then we'll we'll go through some questions. So, well, Joe, we'll start with you. Well, thanks, thanks, Kevin, and uh, thanks everybody for for being here. Appreciate it. Uh, give you a little cheers. Uh, yeah. Beer, beer culture. Cheers, saloon. Uh, beer culture is all about bringing people together, and so. Um, when Kevin asked us to speak at, for Keystone, uh, loved and took the opportunity and super pumped because I think beer and uh, beer culture and what, what Kevin's working on and, and what Keystone's about is bringing everybody in a central spot to either start a conversation or move forward. So uh, for me, this was a super important and, and wonderful thing to do. So, uh, but I'm, I'm Joe Giamanco from uh, City Barrel Brewing Company. Uh, we, uh, we've been open for three years. We have a, a brewery and restaurant uh, located just a block away from here. And uh, we're relatively new in the game. Uh, and we've got uh, some great representation to, to my right for people that have been in the neighborhood for so long. But um, our, our kind of specialty and things that we uh, worked on, are we, look, we love to make IPAs. And then we're kind of dipping our, we, we started out with sour beers. so. You've had them, you don't like them, whatever. Uh, we make them. <laughs> and uh, uh, the other thing that we like to do is we've been kind of dabbling in the lager game too. And so doing a lot of wood aged um, beers as well. But um, in, in the end, the question is, does it does it taste good? And that's, that's what beer should be. So um, that's our jam. And, um, I'm I'm enjoying a, a lime fresca from uh, from Border Brewing, which I'll let uh, Eric talk about. Nice segue. That was <laughs> that was very good. Uh, yeah, I'm Eric Martins uh, with Border Brewing Company. We've been in the crossroads since February of 2015. Uh, we were the first to open a tap room down here in the crossroads. So, uh, and since then, it's grown into this just awesome community of. Are there eight of us now, or is it nine? I keep uh, losing track. There's like nine. Nine, nine breweries, all like within walking distance on the east side of that crossroads. So, uh, yeah, just uh, and, and our thing. I mean, we border tries to be uh, a little bit have a little bit of something for everybody. So we try to keep a really wide range of different styles. Uh, so our objective is sort of to be the place where if you know absolutely nothing about craft beer, you come in, you feel comfortable hopefully leave with a good experience and finding a new favorite beer, something that you like. Uh, so we keep a wide range of different styles from blondes to stouts, you know, high alcohol, low alcohol, and kind of look at our uh, whole menu as like, uh, you know, where are the holes that we're missing in our menu uh, and how can we try to fill those, fill those gaps. So with that, I'll pass it to you, Rafi. Um, hey everybody, my name is Rafi Chaudhry. I'm a CEO of Toronto Label Brewing Company. Really excited to be here as well. Um, totally. Well, you know, it's crazy when Joe said, uh, refers to us as, as kind of old guard because I still feel like we just opened in my head. Uh, but yeah, when I actually, you know, think back on that objectively, yeah, we um, are a little over seven years old. Uh, we opened in uh, early uh, 2015, basically, we shipped our first cake in 2014. Um, so yeah, we've been around a little bit. We're primarily kind of our, we're a distribution brewery, so we have a location, the uh, kind of eastern bridge of the crossroads on Campbell and uh, 18th Street. Um, most of what we do is uh, beer that goes out into distribution. So a lot of what you see from us uh, is draft beer and canned beer that ends up in liquor stores, bottle shops, restaurants, bars. Uh, we, we've had a tap room though since we, nearly since we've been open. Uh, but the big thing for us is that we also have an uh, expansion and restaurant uh, just a little over a year ago now. So that's been really fun say, for us too. So the thing I found really fascinating um, is the founder stories, right? Is the, the, you guys, I mean, you're on your own entrepreneurial journeys, right? When we talk about entrepreneurship, we talk about, you know, kind of that part of what Keystone is focused on. So, and I think you all three have very, you know, everybody that I've talked to has a kind of a very different kind of path that led them to founding their respective uh, companies. So talk a little bit about that path and that founder story, if you will. Sure. Uh, I'm going to go yeah. Michaelis, uh, so that way I don't 
Bless everybody up. Uh, so I started, oh, thanks. So I started as a, started my career as a, a CPA. Prior to that, I had tons of service jobs growing up when I was a young kid, mowing lawns, washing cars, doing that whole thing. I always fell in love with service, no matter what. And so um, I got into the game and uh, being a CPA, you know, you sit on your desk and you run those numbers, um, which is great. I learned a ton. It's almost like speaking a different language. So uh, numbers are extremely important. So if you can, um, take an accounting class, I encourage you to do that. However, it was definitely not for me. I didn't get to talk to anybody um, and I love to um, just vomit information at people. So uh, it was it was kind of a challenge, so I left that and then I started working uh, at a dog daycare and boarding facility. I, I got my first dog and I was like in love with it. And I kind of, if I'm gonna do something, I'm gonna do it 100% whenever I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward and so, uh, ran this dog daycare for about eight years, and it was a great experience. I met a lot of wonderful people, and then um, I have I have two part two other partners in our business, Grant Wayner, who uh, is an amazing human and maybe the nicest guy you'll ever meet, and then my other uh, like my best friend uh, James Stutzman, who I knew for for a long period of time, and uh, you know we always have those conversations of like, hey man, let's open up a bar, let's go do this. And then, you know, one day it finally came to fruition. James had worked at uh, Casey Beer Co. for a long time as their marketing manager. And then, um, you know, he's like, all right, well, I'm ready to go. Let's, let's finish this. And so then I was like, no, dude, you, you're, you're not a good brewer, by the way. Your beer does not taste good. And uh, he loved my brutal honesty, but uh, that kind of set us up for success and stuff. And, then, and so uh, for me, that's where I came into play. And now I'm working with our tap room. And, like I said, service is my, my jam. So I just, I went head over heels that I got the opportunity to open a restaurant, which uh, <laughs> my, uh, one of the, one of my first like mentors was this um, Greek guy in, uh, I grew up in the suburb of Chicago. And he was like, whatever you do, don't open up a restaurant. <laughs> and sure enough, here I am and I'm calling up Tom and I'm like, hey Tom, uh, you know, this is what I'm thinking about doing. He's like, what, did you learn nothing the entire time that you grew up with me? And, uh, anyways, he's like, okay, well, he got so excited. So he came up and he come and hang, came and hung out with us and, uh, we moved on with that. But, uh, that's kind of like my start into the foray of it. And, uh, like I said, for me, services was absolutely key in, in everything that we do on, on for City Girl. So. Cool, yeah, we, we kind of had similar origin stories, Joe. I was a chemical engineer, so another another uh, math nerd, I guess, you know? <laughs> yeah, so, uh, and similarly, like, I like talking to people, I like to be around people, and that's sort of, I feel like maybe a little unusual for that office, and got tired of the fluorescent lights, begging people to go out for a happy hour after work was just like pulling teeth sometimes. I find, you know, found a few people that I could do that with, but I'd always like to socialize. And um, at the same time was uh, home brewing and just working on recipes and getting feedback from that. Um, sometimes it did suck, sometimes it was good. Uh, but that learning process was, was definitely key. Um, quit my job in 2014, opened the brewery in 2015. And, uh, you know, just <clears throat> really uh, wanted to set out, uh, my, my favorite part of the whole process of brewing as a chemical engineer even was the very end when I got to share it with people and kind of have the discussions around it and sort of the educational thing. And just, I loved it when somebody said like, I didn't know beer could taste like that, or I normally don't like beer, but that was really good. And just those types of discussions were uh, re really fun for me, really fulfilling. And I thought, you know, if I'm gonna build a career on something, I think, I think that's it. So. Um, you know, money be damned, salary be damned, <laughs> uh, that, that made it all worth it. Yeah, you know, it is funny, like, we all have very winding paths to, to craft beer, I think anybody who's in the industry. Um, mine was a very strange one, um, so my previous life career before I opened Tornado Label was, uh, I was an independent film producer. Uh, I didn't really anticipate a change from that, I went to film school, I was working full-time uh, producing films, and very happy with those, really proud of the, the, the work that I did on those. Uh, my kind of first um, experience, kind of love for craft beer came um, when it was working in film. Uh, I was working on a film in Paris for about a year. Uh, and, um, you know, at that time I enjoyed beer. I was not like really a huge beer geek, but I enjoyed the beer now and then. But obviously in France, you know, it's, it's wine country and 
drinking good wine most of the time, but I missed having a beer every now and then. Uh, and at that time in Paris, uh, if you want to drink good beer, you mostly drink Belgian beer. So kind of opening up to this really different world of amazing flavors and uh, characters and, and uh, complexities of beer that I never really knew or realized existed. So uh, as I continued in the film industry, uh, worked with a uh, partner of mine that I produced a few films with who has a family background here on the wholesale side. And he kind of knew my interest in, my passion for craft beer, uh, knowledge of the industry. And he asked if I had the interest in potentially working together with him and developing something that was not a film that was uh, craft beer related. And it didn't have form or um, specific uh, identity at that point. And I had never actually worked in the industry. But, you know, if somebody asks you if you might want to start a brewery, then, you know, the laws of the universe require you to say yes to that question. <laughs> so obviously I said, yep, of course, no problem. And uh, it's been full speed ahead ever since. I mean, I just want to recap that piece really quick. We got a CPA, a chemical engineer, and an independent film producer. So, <laughs> like I said, very different you know paths to where you're at today. But it's uh, it's fascinating to me. Um, I want to kind of wrap the two sub next two subjects together. So the science of beer, but then also the innovation. Eric had a really fascinating conversation, very brief conversation with you guys yesterday around some pretty from my seat, some pretty exotic combinations that are being tried out there. Uh, things like birthday cakes getting thrown in and all kinds of wild stuff. So talk to me a little bit from each of your perspectives, whether you're the, the master brewer or not, like how that science role or how that innovation and in the ingredients and the, the flavors that you're going after and, and maybe some of the things you're seeing in your industry that are kind of coming down the path. Yeah, so for, uh, for us, I'm, the, I'm our numbers guy, so the number of Pitches of yeast that we can uh, produce is really important for us. Um, so beer is made of four ingredients, water, yeast, hops, and malted barley. Um, and then, you know, like we can add adjuncts such as birthday cake or Oreos or things like that, which make it super fun and interesting. Uh, but so from our perspective, um, you know, having, having a lab and being able to ensure that the yeast is healthy is, is super important because each one of our tanks that we produce is essentially its own bio like its own ecosystem, a little terrarium for beer production. Um, from my perspective, that's about all I can add on that uh, because I don't fully uh, comprehend the full background on it. Um, and uh, I'd love to talk about uh, innovation and, and where beer styles and things are moving, but I know um, I have a chemical engineer to my right hand side, to your left, that uh, can way more intelligently talk about this. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, no, nobody knows everything about beer. That's kind of part of what makes it awesome. Uh, you can kind of find your own niche and, and discover it. But um, I think I think what I've really enjoyed about this industry is it, it really, I think for me, comes down to it's like the science of flavor is what we're after. And that is so complex, so complicated, so interesting to me um, because you can't just break it down to molecules. I mean, you can, but then good luck reproducing it, breaking it down into molecules and then trying to make, uh, you know, a lime, salted lime water just on a molecular level. You can't, you can't do it. So there is biology involved, there's fermentation involved. Um, and at the same time, the science and the sort of breaking it down, especially I think right now is going on a lot with our, with our suppliers um, and, and hops in particular. We're seeing a lot of cool new hop products where I think they're kind of tackling the um, tackling it from that flavor science angle, which is to say like, okay, if we have this hop leaf, how can we process it to get the most bang for our buck out of it, get all the flavor, but none of the bitterness, or all of the bitterness, but none of the flavor, as little as possible. And um, those kind of experiments are really, really interesting to me. Yeah, I mean, you know, my answer would be sort of more along the lines of Joe's not, uh, my, my skill set is not, uh, you know, oriented towards the science and chemistry of it. But, you know, what's interesting, I think, about brewing is that every single aspect of brewing is science. And I'm not sure people always appreciate that because I don't shortchange how much of it is expressionistic and artistic to a sense um, and about, you know, being creative in terms of uh, thinking about flavor combination and what's going to work in terms of, you know, whether it's a hop you use or uh, adjuncts that work together in the right way in the same way that you would think about cooking. Um, those are all super important, but at the end of the day, every single one of those is always quantified and assessed and measured at some scientific level. 
Yeah, we've said before, making a good beer once is art, making it two or more times is science. And so it's like that repeatability is where you really have to start sharpening the pencil and being careful about all your QA, QC stuff. And so beer is like, <clears throat> beer has had this innovation in the last 50 years uh, that that's happened. So in the 70s, um, Jimmy Carter basically deregulatized um, the brewing industry, which was super cool. So home brewers were able to start producing beer. And from that point in time, we started copying what the Germans were doing and the Belgians were doing and, and these old school brewing countries. And brewing has been around for like 2,000 years, right? So uh, it's not like we're doing something that's brand new or anything like that. However, the, the companies, it was so concentrated amongst a few companies that were producing it that you weren't getting this innovation happening. Um, so uh, it kind of leads into the whole discussion of why we're here, is that uh, homebrewers then came out and it was a mass source of ideas that started just pumping out new beers. And so, like I said, we had to kind of uh, learn to uh, crawl before we could walk. And, and now I feel like we're starting, well, it feels like now we're starting to run, but, um, you know, we've gone through German styles and, and um, English styles, and then we went into the American IPA, which was a West Coast beer, which we didn't, the, we felt the best way to express it was overly bitter and using tons of hops because we're American. And gee, gee darn it, we're gonna freaking go bananas on it. Um, just like a, you know, like a, like a West Coast Chardonnay, it's gonna be overly oaky. Um, and so now we're actually, we're, we've moved from one coast to the next and these, um, the newest thing in our in our phase are these beautiful hazy IPAs, and as you can tell, I I, I love them. Um, and they're really interesting because it's a lot of science in that um, we went from using hops, uh, which is normally a preservative, to using it as uh, almost like an herb um, in in seasoning and getting aromas from it, um, and which goes into to Eric's discussion of, you know, we're we're seeing uh, farmers now farmers and, and companies either taking it. So we are adding way more hops than traditionally uh, done before, but we're receiving less bitterness from it because of how we're using them. Uh, so it's a really exciting time as we've deregulated 50 years ago and we're adding more people uh, to the industry too, which is just yeah. so fun. Yeah, and I also I was gonna say like, I think it's interesting to watch these customer trends. I mean, even since we've been open 2015, like West Coast IPAs were the style and West Coast IPAs are like more bitter. Uh, and and there were, well, we had lots of people that were coming in like, ah, I just don't like IPAs, they're too bitter. So we tried to make kind of like a not bitter IPA. And now we're seeing this push, like the needles kind of swung back the other direction with the New England or Hazy IPA, which is like, almost zero bitterness, let's get as much uh, much of the aromatics as we can. And I'm a, now I'm getting people coming in saying, I kind of want that bitter IPA. We've had this West Coast IPA on for seven years and we're cool again. So, so it's funny to see kind of the, the pendulum swing back and forth on some of these concepts of beer. And that's what's fun about being in a taproom. You can just get that direct feedback uh, from, from your customers. Yeah, and there's so much that's cyclical about it. And the one thing that's really fun for me or enjoyable, I think, for all the industries, you know, when the emergence of loggers and pilsners as one of the more popular sought after styles these days. And I remember doing a, 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 a pilsner the first year we were in business called Oscar, and it was tasty. We liked a lot, and we did an event that was just other local pilsners, and brewers came up to it. We were all drinking each other's loggers and enjoying it, had a great time hanging out. Nobody was there in terms of consumers. It was a very uh, uh, you know, empty room in terms of customer uh, uh, turnout. But, Nowadays, one of the most, uh, one of the trendiest and most kind of sought after styles for uh, breweries these days. Uh, I gotta say, uh, I don't know about you guys, but Jimmy Carter's place in the Pantheon of Presidents just went up a little bit for me <laughs> of the deregulation of the craft beer industry. So that's fantastic news. Um, so from from my perspective, you know, people ask me sometimes, like, what do you do? And I, my easy answer is I'm an ecosystem builder, and people kind of give me that weird look. So I don't know if you guys know this, but like the the literal definition of a keystone is, in biology anyway, it's a species that optimizes an ecosystem, right? And so for us, we're trying to bring the collaboration, we're trying to bring things together. I'm fascinated by this concept of Brewer's Alley that has emerged, like this collaboration that you guys have 
and this density of you know, like-minded individuals and businesses that are working together. Um, to me, it's, you know, you, you guys have been ecosystem building here. It's not just about building your businesses, but it's about building this, you know, thing you guys have. So how, how did that start? And how do, how do you, you know, it's not, my understanding, it's not just the brewers now. It's also includes the distillers that are in the area and that kind of thing. So tell me a little bit about that. Well, first off, we all make our own product and it's really, when we love it and it's great, but it's really great to drink somebody else's product. So first off, selfishly, we love to get together so we try each other's uh, beers or wine or um, or liquor. So that's always the, the base uh, start of everything, which is super fun. Uh, but we, uh, you know, we looked at each other and the great thing about a young industry or even innovation that happens is that there's this sharing um, and especially in the brewing industry and distilling and, and winery, um, you know, liquor tends to loosen up lips too. So uh, we have this great amount of sharing and being a young industry, we need each other to support each other. And so um, whether somebody needs a bag of grain or we've got a problem with our glycol chiller or something, we all talk about it. And we found that like, hey, why don't we uh, just start in, you know, like let's set something formal. Let's let people know that this whole area is super fun. So we started this um, East Crossroads alcohol producers, kind of call it a collective, if you will, just for education. Um, but it's it's a time when we meet once a month to just discuss some of the issues that are in the area. So uh, so East Crossroads organization is is um, is this entity that's just starting to to flourish and grow, which is kind of super fun. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I guess I agree with everything you just said. I won't uh, double down on too much of it, but I'll say like, I think one thing I've really enjoyed about that the collaborative atmosphere, everything is like the concentrations, the concentration of the lessons learned that we get. Um, when we screw something up, we get to share it with everybody and they learn from it and vice versa. So you're, you know, we're eight xing our, our failures, which is, uh, it's kind of allowed us to learn like, okay, they had this issue with their glycol chiller and it was because they didn't service it and you need to replace this part or whatever. Let's make sure we do that so that doesn't happen to us because that was a big whoops and they were down for a week or whatever, right? Like, so um, <clears throat> all those sort of little mundane operational things that the, those failure points we get to learn uh, at a much more accelerated pace, and I think that's awesome. But yeah, I, I think the nature for me <clears throat> of the, the collaborative atmosphere really just comes down to like uh, the way that our, the, pr the promiscuity of our customer. I mean, people are coming down and they're not entirely brand loyal to just one brewery typically. So they're gonna, they're gonna hop around, they're gonna do the beer tours. And, um, and I think that's a big part of it. And another part is, uh, I don't know what the latest statistic is, but it's over 80% of beer in the market is like the big three, you know, Bud Miller Coors. So we're kind of all in this battle together to like, hey, beer can taste better than that. We're gonna try to prove it to you. And if you find that out at City Barrel or Torn Label, that's cool by me because then you're potentially a new customer for us as well. Yeah, absolutely. No, I think that's, you know, one aspect about the KC brewing scene and the Crossroads brewing scene is that it's new. It's really like people think that this is, it's been, it's big and it's been around, but like it's really, it's a very small tight-knit group and we all kind of came around starting around seven, eight years ago and that kind of contributes to being a much more tight-knit, close community on both professional and uh, personal level. Uh, and, you know, when, when we first opened and there was, you know, two or three breweries in the area versus uh, a couple of years later when there was, you know, seven or eight breweries, you could absolutely see a great difference in terms of uh, people coming out because, you know, people, the more um, craft breweries, the more places there are to visit, whether it's distilleries, breweries, and wineries, that they can come out and, uh, and hit up, you know, the more they are incentivized to do that as a nice kind of weekend activity or, you know, out of town activity. Um, it's much more of a kind of a, maybe daunting prospect for somebody to come out for a drive when it's just one or two breweries in the block and they gotta make an effort to do, uh, just to do those two. But if there's you know five or six they can hit and really make it a nice trip out of it, then all of us benefit from that. So it's been uh, fun to see the growth of the, the neighborhood uh, in that sense for not just us at Brewers Alley, and like them, as you alluded to, you know, just uh, with uh, the Spirits and Casey Wineworks and all the others who are you know, very much, you know, kind of part of us with this, the, the growth. Guys, I gotta say, so uh, whether it's the 
biologics, the science community that should could learn from you guys about you know voice of customer perhaps instead of just focusing on as Eric said the molecules piece of it or whether it's entrepreneurs you know understanding the collaborative power that you guys pull together and kind of the founder stories that you guys have. I mean, I, it's just fascinating and I'm, I'm uh, thankful to you guys for being welcoming uh, for, for Keystone as we've established, you know, our first kind of foray in the community. And I look forward to, you know, the opportunity, as I, I think I've explained to all you guys, you're, you're an important ingredient in an innovation community because, you know, not only is there the social lubricant side of sharing and collaboration and that kind of thing and the innovation that'll come from that but there's also the need for the vibrancy the walkability and you guys have really created that here in this community so i just want to say thanks um and also thanks for being a part of this i look forward to you know featuring all of you guys as we roll through this and build this together so i appreciate that um, awesome thanks fellas appreciate it cheers cheers